Hey, what's up, guys? It's The Chinist. So today is March 28th, Wednesday, New Comic Book Day. I have my haul here of 23 with 21 individual titles. So yeah, I have read through this stack, and kicking it off, we're going to start off with Boom Studios' this go-around. So this is actually Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, issue number 25. They did a little bit of a blind chase. They, they put, a, put them in the uh, the back, I'm sorry, the black poly bag, so you can't see the cover. So there is a 1 in 25 uh, variant, chase variant. The same artist did all the covers, but uh, there's one variant. So I think all the regular covers are uh, helmets, and there is a group photo, which is the 1 in 25 variant. So I opened the top of these. I have not looked at them yet. Let's see what we got. Okay, so I guess it's on the front side. All right, we got one red helmet. Let me see what we got in this one. I guess it's going to be on this side. And, oh, we got a yellow helmet. So no 1 in 25 chase variant for uh, for this go-around. I guess you, you're not lucky every time. But yeah, so in addition to the variants, this was also some sort of key issue. I hear that someone important, you know, some maybe someone from the team or like a key character actually dies here in this one. Not sure who, but uh, yeah, pretty cool to have a key issue nonetheless, even though I did not get a uh, variant. I think I'll probably put this one in the spec box and put this one in the PC. Yeah. All right, next up from DC, we have Dark Knight's Metal. So this is number six. This one actually concludes a story arc. And man, this story arc has been phenomenal in my opinion. So this was the, um, I think it's like cover D, which is the Jim Lee variant. I got the Jim Lee variants for all the issues one through six. And this is the cover A. <laughs> so again, yeah, so this is the conclusion. And this entire issue is like straight up battle, man. This was a phenomenal issue to really tie it all up. Greg Capullo's artwork on this entire um, story arc has been phenomenal in my opinion. Love that guy's artwork. So yeah, so this entire issue was fighting Barbatos as well as the Batman Who Laughs. There's a little bit of a secret twist in here in order to beat the Batman Who Laughs. I will not uh, you know, give that away. I won't show you what happens there. But man, this was a great battle, guys. If you all have not been uh, picking up Dark Dice Metal, this is, I'm sure this is going to go in trade. I would highly suggest if you are a DC fan to pick up the metal in trade. I'm sure it's going to come up maybe like another... Uh, one to two months in my opinion. All right, on the DC run, Trinity. So I hear that Tr Trinity is actually stopping, I think, at issue number 21. I was going to cancel this, but I decided to go ahead and keep it going just to go, you know, finish off that uh, the series. <clears throat> so this one was pretty decent. You know, I felt that uh, this was maybe like a three out of five overall for this one issue. A little bit of, uh, you know, pretty de decent uh, fighting in this one that occurs, which is the uh, the saber here, you know, in my opinion for this issue. But uh, yeah, Trinity, you know, it started out pretty strong, but it got a little bit lackluster, you know, along the, uh, the higher number of issues here. All right, next up, Terrifics. So this is issue number two. I thought that issue number one was great. You know, there was a lot of, uh, you know, comparison between the Fantastic Four and this team here. You know, maybe yes, maybe no. But, you know, again, this really, this team really stands up by themselves, in my, in my opinion. You know, no need to compare these guys to Fantastic Four. So you get a little bit of a backstory of this girl. I forgot what her name was, like Alyssa or something of that nature. But you find out that she actually got trapped into this, uh, not the negative zone, but the uh, but the uh, the dark realm. And she actually grew up there, you know, even though she didn't eat or anything. It's like a weird place. But uh, yeah, you get a little bit more more of a backstory of uh, who she is. And apparently, when she becomes physical, anything she touches explodes. So pretty cool power, I guess, more of a curse than a power. But uh, yeah. The teammates, these four teammates, really working well together so far, in my opinion. So yeah, the Terrifics. Check it out. If you like Fantastic Four, pick it up. But again, this is really a standalone uh, title, in my opinion. Okay, next up, Teen Titans. So this is yet another title that uh, DC is going to be canceling. I forgot which issue number this one goes up to, but they will be canceling this one. They just released the new team, which uh, Robin is going to be part of. And it did not look like Robin was going to be together with Jonathan, Jonathan Kent, you know, the super sons that they're splitting up. So yeah, not really sure where Jonathan Kent is going, but they did release a new team that Robin is going to be on. So this one kind of, uh, you know, kind of uh, is the ongoing of Beast Boy who kind of broke off the team. He's on his own and he's kind of under the control of this other lady. And, uh, you know, 
you kind of see the team kind of come in, try to save him, and a little bit of battle that kind of goes on the very end. So this is going to be a very good uh, battle that comes up between Beast Boy and the Teen Titans here in the next issue. So yeah, Teen Titans. All right, next up from DC, we have The Flash. Love this title. Man, if you are a fan of The Flash TV show, I highly suggest for you to jump into the comic world, in my opinion. So they have done a great job kind of building up the entire Flash family. At this point in time, Gorilla Grodd has all of the Flash family, including uh, Godspeed, who's helping him out, uh, helping Barry out here. But uh, they are all under control of Gorilla Grodd. So this is Barry Allen, who got, who has his powers back, and he's kind of fighting the team. So man, I really enjoy this little battle between uh, Barry Allen and uh, Wally West. I love the lightning uh, that you know. Wally West has the blue lightning while uh, Barry Allen has the, uh, the red yellow lightning, and I love the way that it's drawn. You know, as they're ru you know running and fighting. Love that stuff. So yeah, again, great issue here. They're going to go, I think, one more issue to really tie this one up, but this was a great battle. So yeah, guys, if you enjoy The Flash, you really need to be picking this up and trade if you have not been picking up the floppies. Next up from DC, we have Doomsday Clock. Man, I love this title. So I w actually went back and I reread um, The Watchmen in trade. You know, I've, I've read it before as when I was younger, but I uh, picked it up recently. I re read through the entire thing one more time. Man, loved it. You know, I could tell that Jeff Johns is doing a great homage to the original Watchmen. I mean, you know, from the artwork and the panel layout to the feel and emotion of the characters, man. Great storytelling by Jeff Johns, man. Five out of five so far in the storytelling. If you are a fan of the Watchmen, this is really like Watchmen Volume 2. They have done an excellent job, you know, reviving the storyline here. So this one is really more of an origin of the current Rorschach. They kind of show you like a glimpse of his hand, you know, you kind of started figuring out who he could have possibly been, but this is kind of like the origin story and how he got Rorschach's mask to carry on the Rorschach name. So yeah, very good um, backstory here in Doomsday Clock issue number four. Okay, next up for Marvel side now, we have Champions. Man, this issue number 18, man, this was a great issue, a, you know, very emotional in my opinion. So this is still, you know, running uh, Vivian, who is turned human from the uh, Haya Evolutionary. She had quite a spat with her Vivian 2.0, who contracted a virus and actually tried to kill uh, the original Vivian. So this kind of uh, wraps up, you know, why the emotions between Vivian and uh, the Vision and how the Vision views uh, you know, Vivian 2.0. In addition to that, you have a pretty good storyline going on with Scott. And Scott's kind of explaining that you know, he may be leaving to, uh, to join the X-Men you know, for a certain period of time. So yeah, man, great issue here. Man, if you're into the Champions, man, this was an excellent issue in my opinion. Okay, next up from Marvel again, we have X-Men Blue. So X-Men Blue, you know, really follows the team displaced, uh, I'm sorry, the time displaced team. They are finishing up their, you know, that little Venom crossover they had. So they're actually out in outer space. This kind of uh, covers Magneto and some of the other uh, X-Men teammates who are left on Earth. Magneto is taking it on, I'm um, sorry, he's going against Sebastian. So man, very, very cool battle that, that that Magneto has with Sebastian. Some of the mutants are going through like a secondary type of uh, evolution right now. And uh, yeah, Sebastian Shaw was one of them. So yeah, very cool battle, man. I really enjoyed this one issue here. So yeah, great fight scene right here. Okay, next up we have Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider. So I was able to pick up uh, one of the variants, this one back to the uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I noticed this one was sold out. I'm not really a Ghost Rider fan, to tell you the truth, but uh, since I was able to pick up the variant, I went ahead and picked it up. So just kind of flip through this one. I, I, I kind of skim read, uh, skim read through this one. I enjoy the artwork. You know, I really feel the artwork goes along with the Ghost Rider, you know, character that you know the style here so you know really enjoy the artwork here you know i'm just not really too much a fan of the ghost rider uh, character overall but yeah i thought this uh this one issue was a little bit intriguing you know but um yeah so bringing back johnny blaze and the original ghost rider yeah all right next up old man hawkeye so this was one you know i did enjoy old man um, uh, logan I did not think that I would like Hawkeye, you know, just because, you know, they try to go back, try to capture that feel of old man Logan, try to, you know, cash in a little bit more. But man, this has been a very good standalone storyline. So this actually happens before old man Logan 
I think like five or eight years, I think they explained the very first issue. But uh, man, excellent fight scene that happens here between um, Hawkeye and I forgot what the other guy's name was, but the other giant. And you know, I think at the very end when he defeats that, uh, the other character here, I believe that is a skeleton that you see years later in Old Man Logan, if, if I recall that correctly. I need to go back to go look at Old Man Logan to see if it's this guy's skeleton or not. But yeah, very good uh, fight scene that happens here at Old Man Hawkeye. A lot of good fight scenes this, uh, this one week. Okay, next up from Marvel, we have Avengers. So this is issue number, um, I'm sorry, uh, part 12 of the No Surrender story arc. Again, I'm tr trying to collect all the floppies here just because they're, they're selling out. And I want to try to read all this together in trade. You know, I read through just the first couple issues. You know, I know it's going to be a great storyline. I'm kind of following the storyline kind of on the side, but I want to read through all together, you know, uh, in one shot. So, you know, I'm aware that the Wonder Woman, I'm um, sorry, Wonder Woman, Wonder Man has come back. And I can't even remember the last time I saw him in any issue whatsoever. So I don't typically read Avengers. So, you know, I may have missed when he was there, but man, I don't recall seeing him like on like any covers or crossover stories in forever so yeah pretty cool to uh, see those two guys fight but uh, I'm not going to show you at all and I want to try to keep it for myself so I can read through the uh, storyline all together okay last up for Marvel I was able to pick up one of the uh, store incentives for Daredevil I'm sorry, Daredevil. This is issue number 600. So I was going to pick up a cover A, but I was lucky to uh, run into the store incentive. And man, I think this one was going for like $30 online, at least on Midtown. So yeah, Daredevil number 600. Love to pick up those uh, big milestone type of issues. Okay, next up from Image, we have Void Trip. So this was one that I was really excited when, you know, the title came out. You know, I was really, you know, looking forward to like a lot of visuals. And, you know, overall, I feel this title w did not really meet my expectation. There was some humor in here, but, uh, you know, I was expecting more. You know, I was really expecting a lot more. In hindsight, I probably would not have picked up this issue. So this, um, I think this uh, concludes the overall story, uh, the title at issue number five. And again, in hindsight, I probably would, ha would not have followed this uh, this title if I knew you know, exactly what, what it was. So guys, let me know, you know, did y'all enjoy this title for those who carried all the, way, all the way through issue number one through five? Or did you feel it was lackluster? Huh? Let me know in the comments below, please. All right, next up again from Image, we have Redneck. So this is a title I would recommend. Man, I love vampires, werewolves, you know, the entire monster genre, if it's done correctly. You know, of course, this is written by Donny Cates, and he is completely on fire right now, man. He is one of my most favorite writers that's out there right now. I actually picked up, like, a lot of his older stuff, you know, before I, before I knew who he was. And actually before he got hot, a lot of stuff in trade. And I started reading that stuff like right before he got hot. And man, as I was reading through the trade, I was like, man, this guy is great, man. I really enjoy his storytelling. And then he got hot. So yeah, man, Donnie Cates, man, he's on fire. He's from Texas. I'm from Texas. This is really based in like rural type of Texas town. So yeah, very cool stuff. You get a little bit more backstory of, I forgot what the little girl's name was, but you really find out like how she came to be man it's like a pretty screwed up story man it's like very <laughs> very very morbid so yeah very cool stuff if you like vampires definitely give this title a shot redneck okay last up from image we have the beef <clears throat> so the beef this is issue number two this is really a superhero comic genre the artwork you know i'm not a fan of the artwork this is a uh, what was it it was bubblegum uh, style genre and I forgot who told me that I got to look back at my last video to see who commented on that but you know outside of the artwork you know I feel the artworks maybe like a two out of five you know maybe like a 1.75 out of five but the storyline I felt was very very good in my opinion a lot of humor that went along in the uh, superhero genre type storyline so this guy through all the chemicals that they're pumping into the cows nowadays he he kind of had like all the chemicals in his body which allowed him to hulk out and what's hilarious is when he goes back into human form, in order to get back to human form, he throws up <laughs> the chemicals, which I thought was hilarious. So yeah, man, this is like a you know a parody of uh, the superhero genre, in my opinion. So if you're looking for humor, something a little bit different, a little bit off the beaten path, check this one out, The Beef. All right, next up from Black Math, I'm sorry, Black Mask, we have Breathless. So the premise to this one, there are monsters that live on Earth. 
they apparently attack humans from time to time. There's like, you know, task force that are out there to try to clean that up. You have this main star who is a, uh, not a taxidermist, but she is a, she's a doctor and, uh, She's going through these uh, experiments. You know, she works for the government right now, and she's an intern, I believe. She's trying to become an MD. <clears throat> so along here, she has asthma, and asthma uh, medicine here at the pharmacies they charge like you know thousands of dollars apparently in this world. And as she's dissecting this uh, monster, something kind of cracks open, and she breathes in the uh, the toxic you know whatever came out of the monster. This actually cures her asthma. So now this entire premise is going to be going forward to where the big coming company, pharmaceutical company is going to try to see, you know, what was going on, try to cash in on that while she's stuck in the middle. So this one issue I felt, you know, the artwork alone, I felt was maybe like a 3.25 out of five. The storyline I felt was maybe a 3.75 out of five, but just not enough to capture me to go on to issue number two. I mean, I, I don't really see how the storyline could evolve beyond what has happened here. You know, they, they really covered a lot of ground here in this first issue. So yeah, so intriguing, decent scores, but I do not think I will pick up a number two. Guys, for y'all who picked up number one, are you gonna pick up number two? What did y'all think about this one? All right, next up, sync number, I think this is number five. Yep, number five. So, you know, these are kind of like that analog, kind of like Ice Cream Man, to where, you know, stories are kind of a little bit different in each issue. This one was really based around this one girl. She loses her dog. You know, she has like a little, like, not a Pomeranian, but like a Maltese or something. And, you know, she finds out through conversation that there's this underground, like, dog fighting type of event that happens and she's trying to find if her dog you know got into this was he killed what's going on so for the dog lovers out there this is going to be a very very difficult issue to get through this is very very dark i really enjoy the sync issue or the sync title overall you know that the dark horror type of feel to it i really enjoy that so yeah i don't want to show too much it's very very gory but yeah sync if you're into that horror if you're into the gore Check this title out, man. This one is, uh, man, this one hits it. Okay, next up we have Bloodborne. So this came from a video game. This is by uh, Titan Comics. I forgot wh who um, who did the video game, but, um, you know, number one was just okay. You know, I was on the fence if I was going to pick up this number two or not. I really enjoy the artwork. You know, the dark artwork that's uh, the horror type of artwork. I felt the artwork here maybe like a four out of five in my opinion, especially go along with the storyline. Pretty good action that happens here, but uh, man, I don't know, man. This the overall title just hasn't really captured me yet. I think I'm gonna skip that number three and maybe check this one out and trade going forward. I did enjoy this title and the artwork's great. You know, a lot of gore, a lot of good fighting, but I don't know. It just it did not capture me enough to go on to number three. Okay, title that I have been enjoying, Imaginary Fiends, and this was uh, recommended by John over at Cables Comics. I appreciate that, John. So this one here, you kind of have like another realm, that, you know, like another parallel world that kind of uh, uh, works alongside ours. You have these, you know, uh, aliens is really what they are, who are able to get into a realm and they kind of latch on to human emotion. So most of them latch on to ch uh, children. And as they grow, these monsters also grow. And depending on how the monster's personality is, it can get extremely strong and, and actually start hunting down humans in our world. So yeah, very cool issue here. You know, very cool concept. Uh, this is kind of like an X-Files in a sense, along with monsters kind of mixed into it. So yeah, man, really enjoy this, uh, this one title. And again, thank you for uh, John over at Cable Comics for recommending this to me. All right, last up from Valiant, we have Exo Man of War. So, man, I've really enjoyed this title so far. You know, I've, I've gone back, I've read through all the previous older uh, the volumes of Exo. I've really fallen in love with this character. So, in this one title, and I think this is volume number four, if I recall it correctly. So, in this one title, you, know, you have Eric, who is Exo Man of War. He actually, you know, starts out as a farmer. He becomes a warrior. He gets uh, drafted into the army. He gets uh, he goes up the ranks of the army into uh, general. He gets higher and higher and higher until he actually takes over this entire planet. He's the ruler of this entire planet. Well, the planet starts to turn on him, and this is the final battle between you know the uh, the higher guns who are trying to kill him 
and uh, Eric fighting for his life. Man, great battle, great action scene here. And after this, this actually concludes this alien planet and Eric is actually returning back to Earth at this point in time. So it's pretty cool. And, you know, they've been, uh, this little word here, it kind of explains, you know, what the issue is and like what his status is and now he's a Visigoth because he's coming back to Earth So yeah, that's pretty cool if you kind of notice like what this uh, What this little theme that they have going on the front cover so I didn't really notice that until about issue number seven or so So guys, that's gonna be it for this week's brand new haul. It was a great week a lot of good reads in there Should you enjoy what you see here? Please like and subscribe. We'll talk to you later